Right now, we would like to dive into a topic of fighting demons in your marriage. Fighting demons in your marriage. Uh, marriage is an institution created by God. Uh, marriage is something that the Lord has created. It wasn't created by Hollywood. It wasn't created no. by the culture. God instituted different um, principles for marriage. From the beginning, He said that men and the woman should be together. He also instituted that a man should leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. The scripture also tells us that uh, the Bible did not uh, give us a loop poll for um, homosexual marriage or a lesbian marriage. Um, the Bible doesn't give us a loophole for open marriage. Um, the Bible doesn't, um, the Bible puts very clear guidelines and boundaries of marriage. But what we see in the first marriage in the scripture is this, is that in the garden this marriage was and the snake, um, the enemy came in and temptations came in, lies came in, shame came in and they lost the paradise, they started to fight. This broken marriage, even though it didn't end in divorce, it produced death and children started to kill each other and then immorality came, violence came and then the flood came and pretty much chaos came. And what we would like to do today is we want to talk about overcoming spiritual problems in marriage. We're going to focus on about six main problems that we've seen in marriage mm -hmm. and uh, we're gonna pray. <clears throat> so I want you to open up your heart if you are watching right now and you are not married. Please take notes. Please deal with these problems and your future spouse is going to be so grateful that you did. Um, if you are married, uh, please don't take notes right now and say this is what my husband needs because it's easier to blame everything on the other spouse. Yes. Our goal is not to blame. Our goal is to battle. Come on somebody, drop that in the chat. Teaching on spiritual warfare is not about blaming. It's about battling. Come on, that's good. It's right not there. about blaming your spouse. It's about mm -hmm. battling spiritual forces. So the first problem, spiritual problem we're going to face today is... <laughs> Number one, right well, here. Number one is a generational curse of divorce or broken relationships in marriage. What does that mean? It's uh, whenever whatever is not transformed will be passed down through uh, the bloodline mm -hmm. to another generation. It's something that runs in your family. So it might not have started with you, but it comes to you at the particular time Mm -hmm. And it's called generational curse, an iniquity mm -hmm. that was passed down through the bloodline. And one of them could be a curse of divorce or broken relationship. Mm -hmm. So what uh, my wife just mentioned is this, is that whatever is not transformed by God mm -hmm. will be transferred to the next generation. So drop this in the chat right now. Whatever is not transformed by God will be transferred to the next generation. If you don't deal mm -hmm. with certain generational proclivities, certain generational iniquities, if you don't bring them to the cross, they are in danger of surfacing and destroying your marriage. Now for those of you who are like, but I'm a Christian, um, you know, all of that is over. Technically, yes, or positionally, yes, mm -hmm. but Practical we do enough. see that on a practical level, just like positionally, you are righteous but a lot of people are not living righteous life. Mm -hmm. And so positionally you are holy, but a lot of people still, there's a practice of sanctification, a process of sanctification where you have to walk it out. Mm -hmm. And so is with generational curses. Some battles didn't start with you, but they must end with you. Drop this in the chat. Some battles didn't start with me. For example, maybe you're battling with loneliness, mm -hmm. rejection, abuse or some other stuff that you notice it runs in your family. It can end with you today even if it didn't start with you. I know that when we got married Lana, you, you faced certain things that were demonic and then you came to that revelation that they were not something that started with you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, when we got married I started to experience a lot of um, things like loneliness, uh, depression, um, a lot of heaviness and darkness and um, uh, even hatred of people. I would even 
tend to isolate myself in the not not like in a normal way not being being an introvert but that was abnormal to me and I didn't know at first what it was I blamed myself for absolutely mm. everything that I was such a horrible person and we already talked about it I shared my story but when there, uh, when we realized and had uh, learned about things like m generational curses and demons and we kind of I kind of analyzed my family tree and I saw certain uh, uh, bends in my family and I recognized a pattern that went through my bloodline mm -hmm. and I saw that in me mm -hmm. but that was not from the very beginning it just got activated at certain point of my life and I think it's very important not to blame your bloodline, your mother Correct. or your father, but actually start dealing with that. Because if you're going to mm -hmm. become a victim and start blame shifting or saying, oh, how playing a victim, mm -hmm. that's not going to help. We are searching if you're searching for solution, uh, being a victim is not going to help and rec realizing or blaming your parents, your grandparents is not going to help because honestly, it wasn't even their fault. They Probably got it from somebody, <laughs> from else, somebody yeah. else, from their, mm -hmm. you know, forefathers. Mm -hmm. And so it's important to, you know, start battling and not uh, blaming. So good, mm -hmm. so good. You know, uh, some people, maybe you're listening to this or you're re-listening to this and maybe you're saying, well, you know, all of these little deliverance ministers, they are constantly blaming the devil for everything. Please hear us loud and clear. We are not talking about blaming the devil. And before you, maybe you, maybe some of you are like, well, I don't believe this stuff is real. <laughs> well, it's not about what you believe. Your beliefs have to line up with the scripture. Yes. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 5, God made it very clear mm -hmm. that there are iniquity that get vi gets visited to the fourth generation. Honestly, it goes for more than fourth generations if nobody confronts it and deals with it. Yes. In That's Proverbs chapter 3, verse 33, it says, The curse of the Lord is on the house of the, the wicked. wicked. It does not say the curse of the Lord is on the wicked. Mm -hmm. And many people don't realize you can be in the house of the wicked and experience the same curse on your life. Second Timothy 1 5 Paul says to Timothy he says that the faith that was in your grandma in your mom and now is in you. Mm -hmm. That means that there are things that follow yes. in our family tree yes. mm -hmm. and you're not responsible for what you inherit but you are responsible for what you allow to continue. Mm -hmm. You can confront that and so curses and blessings are real. If you look at the Old Testament you see that Disobedience to God brought curses. You saw obedience to God brought blessings. And so when you live your yes. life in disobedience to God, curses is mm -hmm. God allowing the enemy to run and bring havoc into somebody's life. Until in fact, someone puts an end yeah. to it, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a lot of curses actually came from God yes. in the Old That's Testament. That's true. Mm -hmm. and so God is the one that cursed the ground. God mm -hmm. is the one that cursed the ch childbearing. It was, uh, we see that God says the curse of the Lord. Somebody in your family line crosses the boundary, mm -hmm. commits a sin, kills a baby in the ritual, Somebody in the family mm -hmm. dedicates their children to the devil, crosses the line. Yeah. It provokes the wrath of God. Mm -hmm. Don't bury your head in the sand and pretend this stuff is not real. People live their lives many times under the signs of, under the, the weight of curses. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the, Derek Prince in his book, uh, They Shall Expel Demons, talks about the signs of curses. And he says that one of the signs of curses is marital instability, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, chronic sicknesses. Mm -hmm. One of the signs of curses is constant poverty. Mm -hmm. One of the signs of curses is constant mental attack. Mm -hmm. One of the signs of curses is accident prone. You constantly have accidents. They're unexplainable. And so our goal today, as we have heard, as you already have said, mm -hmm. is that if there are curses, there's yeah, probably yeah, causes yeah. and they need to be dealt with yes, through repentance, absolutely. through renouncing, through pleading the blood and through breaking those things in your life. And maybe and you're dealing with the curse of divorce. Mm -hmm. You you lost feelings for your spouse and that's what happened to every person in your family. They get divorced. These people, they cheat on their spouses and instead of just going in and saying, I made a mistake in marrying a spouse, maybe you need to go and deal with the root of the mm -hmm. problem. The devil wants to destroy your marriage. The devil is not for marriage happiness. He's for the marriage 
marriage destruction. Yes. He wants children to suffer. He wants you to suffer. He wants you to go from one divorce to another divorce because that maybe runs in the family. But somebody dropped this in the chat. It ran in the family until it ran to me. Somebody dropped this in the chat. It will end with me. In my marriage, there will be no divorce. In my marriage, there will be no abuse. In my marriage, there will be no infidelity. In my marriage, there will be no fighting, throwing stuff at each other, abusing, physical beating, cursing each other, calling each other with B and F words. In our marriage, we will have a garden. We will kill snakes, Come we will on. plant seeds, and we will uproot weeds. That's so good. Um, before we're gonna go specifically into the marriage um, area, I just wanted to point something out. When I share my testimony and I mentioned that I am a fifth generation Christian, mm. how was it possible for me to have a curse if if I am blessed, if the blessing of Abraham follows me? Yes, it's true. Mm. I am blessed by the blessing of Abraham. Mm -hmm. But there are certain areas. It's not that if I had a generational curse it does not mean my full life was completely cursed okay yeah. there was just one area yeah. in my bloodline that was not dealt with uh -huh. and this what caught me by surprise because most of my areas all of them they're they're blessed i received that blessing but there, it's still possible mm -hmm. to be uh a Christian in 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 a third, fourth, or fifth generation, and still there could be one area. That you know, like I'm even thinking be, about Abraham. Yeah, barrenness. His, exactly. Every woman had a had had no had the mm -hmm. problem with conceiving children. Abraham's son Isaac, barrenness. Jacob, mm -hmm. barrenness. Mm -hmm. We see lying. <laughs> Abraham lies. Yes. Uh, we see that same thing happens to Jacob, uh, to Isaac. Same thing happens to Jacob, and we see same thing happens to his kids. And so until Joseph comes and I believe like that stuff yeah, gets broken. Yeah. And Abraham, he was a blessed man. Mm -hmm. So you can have an area of your life that needs to be dealt with, that you could see repeating in your generations. And maybe it's on the level of the mind. Maybe it has a demon attached to it. Maybe it had an open door. But don't just kind of walk around and simply say the spiritual world is not real. All is what I see and that's it. These people make a big deal about this stuff. Trust me, the world is way more spiritual than we realize. We're not saying behind every problem is a demon, but we are saying that things are way more spiritual than we realize. Yes. And if we only deal with physical and we deal with symptoms and we never address the spiritual, then we are not going to have a victory that the Lord wants us to have. Yeah, that's you true. know, some of us have baggage that's rooted in our background. Mm -hmm. Somebody mm -hmm. drop this in the chat. Some of us have baggage and it's rooted in our background. Mm -hmm. And we're not saying right now for you to go and start pulling your ancestry tree and all of this stuff. But honestly, some of us just need to be, look look at your family. Yeah, just analyze it. Yeah, I analyze think your family tree. I think it's tree. very important to yeah to think, to analyze, to look at your family tree, to look at your parents and then look at the things that you're struggling with, especially if you are battling with the, uh, c cannot hold a relationship stable or, you mm -hmm. know, your marriage is falling apart. Maybe there's something there in your family that needs to be broken. Mm -hmm. In my book on <clears throat> um, Break Free, um, would you pull this book out right now, uh, on, on the yes. bottom one? In Break Free, I actually share the story um, so I deal with, um, in the book Break Free, mm -hmm. I deal with pretty much uh, generational curses and you can download this book on my website. Uh, very easy to read and um, it deals with um, generational curses and I share the story about two families. Mm -hmm. One, um, it was recorded by one guy in uh, 1900s. One family is uh, Juke's family and the other one is, you know, Jonathan Edwards family. And in Juke's family, so this guy did a little digging around about somebody's, you know, backyard, really somebody's background. And he looked at his family tree and out of 1,200 uh, descendants, he found that 310 of them really died very poor. And that's really one out of four. He also seen that 300, could you close the door? 300 of them died in infancy from lack of good care and good conditions. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about one-fourth yes, of your descendants yes, are all yeah. dying. Yeah, that's not normal. That's not normal. Mm -hmm. 50 women who lived, lived very loose lives. 
Um, 400 men and women were physically wrecked early by their own wickedness. Seven of his family members were murdered. So we're talking about big family tree. Mm -hmm. 130 were criminals who were convicted of more or mm -hmm. one or more crimes. I mean, you look at this family tree and that's a crooked tree. Yeah. You know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist. You don't even have to believe in generational curses. You look at that like something is wrong with that. Yeah. I mean, when you go to the doctor, yeah. one of the first things oh, the doctors will ask. True. Yeah. Does this That's run it. in a family? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, doctor, mm -hmm. I don't believe in generational curses. I got saved, sanctified, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. justified. Uh, I don't believe in that stuff. Yeah. The doctor says, excuse yeah. me? True. It's scientific evidence true. that stuff runs in yeah. blood, yeah, in bloodline. And even the science confirms yeah. that certain patterns are passed down to next generation. It, and yeah. it's now, reality and it's true. Now let's look at Jonathan Edwards' family. So two families lived, so this guy, he, when he did the study, he found that two families mm -hmm. lived at the same time. Mm -hmm. Now Jonathan Edwards' family, one of them, one of his descendants was a U.S. Vice President. Mm -hmm. Three were U.S. Senators, three were Governors, three were Mayors, 13 were College Presidents, 30 were Judges, 65 were Professors, 80 held Public Office, mm -hmm. 100 were Lawyers, and 100 were Missionaries, Pastors, and Theologians. Wow. Crazy. Yeah, that's and somebody can look at that and say, oh, they're lucky. Are you sure? Because the Bible doesn't use word luck to describe that. No, yeah. The Bible uses the word blessing. Yeah. And Jukes, family, the scripture uses the word curses. And so I really want you not ignore, if you look at your family and you see a lot of divorce and you see a lot of loneliness, adultery, cheating, don't discredit and walk blindly into yes. marriage and simply say, well, you know, we love each other. The question is, what kind of generational curses are you going to be dealing with? Because sooner or later, I tell people when they get married, you're going to have to confront generational demons. Absolutely. You're going to have Absolutely. to confront them. Yes. And so um, and it's important that you don't walk in blindly and in ignorance yeah. because it will hit you from a place you didn't even know where it came from. And then you're going to be like, oh wow, you know, all this love, all these dreams that I have. And now they're going to get sucked out and destroyed by mm -hmm. what? Generational curses are way more powerful than your infatuation. Generational curses are way more powerful than your ve wedding vows. Okay, so, and you have to know that, which means that you have to take a stand with the name of Jesus and deal with those curses so that you can keep your wedding vows, so you can keep your marriage and you can destroy the generational cycles and so you can have a generational yeah, blessing. Yeah. And I think I just want to point out that it's very important to uh, fight against those curses and come against them and, and not, not be lazy. You know, fighting against something that is strong like that and could be stronger, it's, 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 it could be a tiring thing. It could be a thing that seems impossible. But I want to let you know that it's possible. Curses can be broken. Come on. Marriages can be restored, even from the lowest situations Come that on. seem so impossible. God can restore and I've seen so many restored marriages and it's possible as long as we choose to, you know, battle, stand in a gap for our uh, bloodline to come out of it so we don't pass it on to the next generation. Amen. Amen. Um, any practical things that people can do to break? I mean, we can renounce curses. Yeah, I we think the first step is honestly recognizing. Recognize. Recognize your cur what kind of curse maybe or like what are the things you're battling uh -huh. with. Then the second, second thing I think is, is we need to repent. Repent. We need to repent for huge. whoever yeah. and whatever doors were open. You know, that's what I actually had to do. Really? I, the Holy Spirit led me. Obviously, I read some books that guided me mm -hmm. to that information that I have to repent, not only on my behalf, but I was repenting on behalf of my, you know, fathers and grandfathers. But grandmother. it's not so that they can go from purgatory no, or like no, that. Not, in that not for that, no, right? No, okay. no not in that kind of sure. situation. Not for them to be forgiven, but for that curse to be broken over mm -hmm. my life, for that iniquity to stop on mm -hmm. me. I just had to do that. I repent for myself, for my fathers. Mm -hmm. And uh, third one is it's renounce. Renounce. So re yeah. recognize, repent, and renounce. and renounce. Yeah. And how do we renounce? You verbally renounce. Yeah. I renounce the curse of divorce. I renounce yes. every unclean spirit that's connected to that. You know, I renounce that right now. And, and just name the issue that uh -huh. you're struggling with and renounce it. And then I think you have to resist. Absolutely. Because sometimes those three, they are just like a foundation. Uh -huh. But but then the resistance begins. Because even when you were delivered 
the nightmares didn't necessarily stop. They first like subsided. In your case, you actually mm -hmm. had to now fight back. Absolutely. And here's the thing. And this is, please listen to me very carefully, guys. When the curse is broken, the battle does not disappear. Mm -hmm. This is actually, when you're, when you're under the curse, you're tied. Your hands are tied. You are weak. You cannot fight for yourself. You're absolutely, your hands are tied. And this is what happened to me. When I realized that the curse was broken, it's like the Holy Spirit untied my hands mm -hmm. to now fight. And the battle was in front of me. Not, I knew that the victory already belongs to me, mm -hmm. but we don't escape the battle. We cannot be lazy and it's not easy. It's not an easy road. You have to battle. Your Come hands on. are untied. Let's go. I don't know if you <laughs> Let's felt give the devil I don't black know if you guys eye. Felt the, I don't know if you guys felt the anointing, but I felt the anointing on that word. Yeah. I like to say like this is that breaking of the curses removes the bondage. Come on. Yeah. It does not remove the battle. Yes. So let me let's drop that in the chat. Breaking of the curses removes the bondage, mm -hmm. but it does not remove the battle. That's where the resistance comes yes. from. So re recognize, you said recognize, repent, and then you renounce, renounce and then, then you, you resist. resist. But mm -hmm. I think there's one more thing, and this is huge. You have to renew your mind. That's that, that this is where actually Strongholds. this is where actual freedom comes mm -hmm. only on that fifth point, because if we do all of those steps, I mean, the Holy Spirit is so amazing. He will lead us to the renewal Amen. of the mind. Amen. But we have to realize that we need that mm -hmm. because renewal of the mind is to for the strongholds because the devil when we were in bondage he built so much strongholds in our minds and this is where the demons they like to hang on they like to grab onto the false beliefs and strongholds in our minds Amen. when we're destroying them brick by brick mm. the, the the demons they have absolutely nothing to hold on to and this is where you begin to experience a true freedom step by step and that's what happened to me as well mm -hmm. i think that i also have in my book i have a whole chapter about renewing your mind and i yes. think seven steps yes. of how to renew Very your mind good, so i'm not going to go through them right now i would really encourage you guys get this book um, you can download it free of charge on my website i don't care if you buy it on or Amazon. you can listen it as yeah. well or, and on actually Audible. read it yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, so we've talked, guys, has this been a blessing to anybody? Could you help Could you help us and drop number one in the chat? And don't forget to hit thumbs up right now. Share this with somebody. We're going to go to the second demon or the second problem, spiritual problem mm -hmm. in marriage. Mm -hmm. And that is addiction. Addictions. Mm -hmm. Now, there's many addictions. Some of the common addictions mm -hmm. that destroy marriages that I believe demons are behind. Mm -hmm. That is a addiction to porn, addiction to substance abuse, and um, we're gonna mainly deal right now with those yes. two. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand that so many people, you know, like to argue and say, "Vlad, you're gonna see demon behind everything and and all of this stuff." But if you ever dealt with an addiction, it's not only chemical dependency. I do believe the person yeah. who benefits from addiction is the demon. Yeah, he is, it, it hangs on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the addiction to porn is, is very um, destructive in marriage. Um, you know, pornography, God calls pornography sin. Absolutely. Lust is sin. The Bible says, let no fornication and all uncleanness not even be named among you. Yes. Porn is addicting. It's like cocaine. Mm -hmm. It's like a heroin. Mm -hmm. Porn is like cocaine. Um, and so what what porn does is that both cocaine and and heroin and porn they trigger chemical tolerance which requires higher mm -hmm. quantities of drug to be used each time to achieve the same intensity of the effect mm -hmm. and then people watch porn they want to see heavier porn and then deeper porn and all this stuff porn is fake you know it takes really 45 minutes to make it uh, if it takes three days to make a 45 minute video mm -hmm. it's not a real thing it degradates women women are perceived yes. as objects it has a twisted view on sex it leads to shame it creates dissatisfaction with and it's marriage not even sex. real it, it it's, it's fake. what what people are watching on the screen it's not even existent in a real bed between the husband and wife and next week fake. we're going to talk about marriage sex so, uh, but until then, I believe that pornography is like Delilah. 
that binds you mm -hmm. with addiction and has Philistines, AK demons, demons. Mm -hmm. in the room. Its final goal is to take out your eyes, cut off your anointing, and to stop you from being yes. used by God. Listen to me, every Samson. I'm going to say this again. Pornography is like Delilah. It uses the chains of addiction. It has demons behind it like Philistines hiding. Its goal is to cut off your eyes, your vision of Jesus, your vision of God. Take away your freedom, remove your anointing and to stop you from being used by God. And therefore you cannot be blind and think you're only dealing with images. You're dealing with spiritual powers that want to trip you up and want to take your relationship from God. You need to seek yeah. not only yeah. deliverance, you need to seek discipline, you need to do whatever it takes to escape the snare yeah. of the fowler. Yeah. There are other addictions of drug abuse, alcohol abuse. Could you speak into how the enemy uses that a lot of times to trigger the curses, trigger those addictions yes. within the person so that the enemy can put them on the hook and thus funnel destruction in their life? Yes, uh, many times it, it uh, and actually that's what I, my counselor, uh, she shared with me something I mean, kind of knew about it, but it was very fresh mm -hmm. that... Uh, hold on one second. You said you're counselor, so are you, are you going seeing counselling? Are you <laughs> oh, like you in trouble? <laughs> uh -huh. Well, you mentioned it, that, so I just wanted to clarify something because you mentioned okay. that. Yes, I, mean, I am seeing a counselor. Is there a problem? There is no problem. And by the way, there is nothing wrong, people, to go and see a counselor. I think it's such a taboo. And especially okay. I, I realized for me that I should probably do it. It's better to be always proactive. Now I am in a ministry with my husband <laughs> and we are always on a go, go. We're surrounded with people and I, I don't want to burn out. I don't want to uh, get sick in a sense emotionally. And that's why I see my counselor mm -hmm. and we talk through uh, some things and and it's great. And so what I, does your counselor teach you about addiction? Uh, not necessarily like about, it was just like in between the lines. Mm -hmm. I She told me that um, uh, uh, what I mentioned um, earlier that the addictions, they're, 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 they, they go from generation to generation, okay? If, for example, you have an alcoholic in your bloodline, for mm -hmm. example, your father is an alcoholic, if you are a child of that parent, you better not even touch a sip of alcohol because this is what she said, that when, when you decide to drink alcohol just to try it, mm -hmm. something triggers in your physical brain that likes it, mm -hmm. okay? I, and then if something negative is happening in your life, this is the thing that you're gonna be running to as an escape, as a uh, comfort, mm -hmm. and you eventually, a high chance that you're gonna repeat exactly the same uh, alcoholism uh, mm -hmm. like your father. Mm -hmm. Opposed to people whose uh, parents or grandparents were never alcoholics and they try alcohol. Mm -hmm. That's not the thing usually, they will not go to that. Mm -hmm. But we are talking about also a spiritual aspect of it and we know that devil is behind alcohol and yeah. alcohol is addictive. How how do people get addicted? Yes, they are prone to if they have parents who abused alcohol or someone in their family, but even if their family have never abused alcohol, if they try it, that's how people get hooked because yeah. alcohol is addictive. Yeah. It's just uh, some people find it, uh, you know, for some people they get addicted very fast because of that proneness in their bloodline. And I think that we have people who are listening and watching right now who, maybe are dealing with those addictions. If you're dealing with pornography addiction, um, we have videos on how to overcome uh, pornography. Um, there are practical things you can do today. Um, and there are spiritual things you, you need to do. You need to do both things at the same time. People who say only, you know, I'm addicted to porn, I wanna go get delivered. Yes, you need to be delivered, but you also need to practice discipline because both go hand in hand. Same thing with alcohol. Yeah. You need to go and get delivered 100% or drugs. Or drugs. Yeah. But you also, some people will need a rehab, some yeah. people will need a treatment center, some people will need yeah. literally 
uh, professional help. Yeah. And that's something we want to communicate uh, as well today, that this is not just about I'm going to run quickly to the church, pastor will pray for me, yeah. and then yeah, I'm going to yeah, be yeah, free. Yeah. Now, it does true. It does happen with quite a few people, but some people need professional help they yes. need a center that they need to go to yes. um, I know yes. like I have a cousin right now who who was addicted to alcohol and to drugs and yeah he came to the realization of repentance and then he is in the treatment center right now mm -hmm. and so um, but, he didn't just need deliverance he, exactly here's the thing it's one thing to understand that this is wrong it's destroying uh, my marriage mm -hmm. or my family it's another thing to being able to stop it's a completely different mm -hmm. thing. And that's what, how the devil just destroys family families because people, they refuse to seek help for maybe reasons of fear or embarrassment or shame. And mm -hmm. those are the emotions that the devil is using yes. to stop people wow. from seeking help. Wow. And I think that we, we have to like talk about it mm. to help people to put aside those uh, emotions that the devil is putting out there, mm -hmm. minimizing their situation and uh, therefore not, you know, desiring to go seek help. You know, I remember uh, we had a guy you were actually here already. His name was Mitchell. Yes, I and remember. He had a, such a big calling on his life. He was addicted to drugs. And his idea, he knew it was demonic. I mean, he was abandoned by his parents and da-da-da-da-da. And so, mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, we broke the curses. He would get delivered. But there's one thing that we said, you really need to see a Christian rehab center. Mm -hmm. And I remember his excuse. He was not, he didn't have a problem with Oh, I'm too embarrassed. Mm -hmm. He just he was said, shameless. <laughs> he was shameless. It's yeah. just one excuse. He I have a, a daughter, child, yeah. and she needs me. Yes. And I remember I would sit down and I said, Mitchell, you yeah. need to. Your daughter doesn't need an alcoholic. He was a drug addict too. Yeah. And drug yeah, addict. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, but but who's gonna be with my daughter? I said, listen. First of all, you're not even with your daughter anyway. Yeah. Somebody else. Yeah. Your grandparents are with your daughter. Mm -hmm. Give one year. Leave your daughter. So your daughter can get a real dad. Yes, I remember. And I remember I brought a guy named Jason, and, and uh, Jason actually. Remember Jason? Jason had a similar story. Jason, uh, not the Jason, it's oh, married yes, to my yes, aunt, yes. the other Jason. Mm -hmm. And so I remember I brought Jason to Mitchell, and I said, J uh, uh, Mitchell, mm -hmm. Jason had the same problem. Jason was addicted to alcohol, mm -hmm. and he had a family. He left his family. He ran to a rehab. Mm -hmm. He stayed there for a year. At that time, they found a hole in his daughter's or his son's heart. Mm -hmm. And the family says, what kind of a husband are you? Come back, you know. But mm -hmm. he says, I can't come back. I need to finish my program. God supernaturally healed the child. Yes, I remember that. It was powerful. He stayed for two mm -hmm. years in that rehab center. Mm -hmm. Then when he came back from that rehab center. He was a clean man, yeah. He never mm -hmm. touched alcohol again. He never touched drugs again. So this idea, I can't afford to give up three years of my life to submit myself to some kind of a discipleship program, to submit myself to, to deliverance or to, I cannot uh, afford to go across town. It's too much expensive or across mm -hmm. the United States to get delivered. I can't afford this. I'm, I have school. I have this. I have this. Listen, it's the lies of the enemy. Your freedom is more important. Yes. Your deliverance is more important. It's better to take one year to be mm -hmm. completely delivered from all the chemical dependency, whether it's through celebrate recovery, whether it's through mm -hmm. a rehab, whether it's through other Christian treatment center, whether it's to go yes. through an internship program like discipleship program so mm -hmm. you can be broken free. I remember a pastor's son came to, and I won't mention his name, this guy was literally like a, like a addicted to sexual immorality. Mm -hmm. He he slept with anything that moved. He came to our internship. He even counted the days, how many times, how many days it's been since he didn't have sex. Mm -hmm. And he was pastor's son. God not only delivered him, God solidified in him a character of Jesus. Today he's a youth pastor, wow, walking on, in freedom. And so guys, That's please wonderful. hear me loud and clear. This idea that the devil lies to us that, oh, it's taking so much time. Oh, it's just going to embarrass me. Listen, your freedom yes. it matters. You putting value on your freedom and your deliverance yes. is going to set your but family I also think that for success. As, as the sooner uh, people who struggle with addictions recognize that they cannot do it by themselves, the, the, the faster they will receive freedom and help, you know, seek mm -hmm. help. But it's one of the things that people, they still think they can't do it by themselves. 
you know, many times they fall back into it, fall back into, you know, family marriage suffers. And they, they, every time they fall back into it, they, they get out of there, they feel better. And then they feel like, oh, no, I can do it this time. Mm -hmm. and, and it goes on and on, like, and the devil gets them on a hook like a cycle mentally, yeah. you know. Now, guys, if this is helpful for some people, could you drop number one in the chat? Uh, we are on point two. We just have a few more points to go through. And if you are just tuning in, I see quite a few of you just tuning in. Go ahead and hit thumbs up to this video. Mm -hmm. For those of you on Instagram and on TikTok, head over to our YouTube. We would love to see you there um, as well. Now we're going to go to something that is going to get spicy a little bit. And it's going to get a little bit controversial as well as we get more questions asked about this than probably yes. anything mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. And this is about spirit spouses, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. incubus and succubus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So succubus means to lie under. Mm -hmm. It's from old Latin word. Mm -hmm. It takes the form. So this demon takes the form of a woman that has mm -hmm. a sex with men. Mm -hmm. and in, in the sleep. In the, in the sleep. Mm -hmm. Incubus comes from a Latin word, a nightmare induced by a demon. And this demon takes a form of a man and makes mm -hmm. love to a woman. Now, St. Augustine in his book called The City of God says the following. Mm -hmm. There has been a very general rumor. Many have verified it by their own experience and trustworthy persons have co co collaborated the experience others told. That Sylvan and Fons commonly known as incubi, have made wicked assaults upon women. Mm -hmm. This is nothing new for almost any person oh, yeah. who has dealt with demons. This is not an African thing. This is not just a Jamaican or somewhere in Caribbean thing. This happens everywhere. We've met with people that were very famous mm -hmm. who had this problem. Mm -hmm. Uh, people who are in the world very famous who had this and who describe who describe things that we will not describe on this live stream that were shocking and they didn't read deliverance books anything of that but when they opened doors to demons these spirit guides came and they turned into um, spiritual rapists during the night yeah. and even yeah. during the day Yes, they would show yes. up. Mm -hmm. And so um, I remember doing deliverances on, on people. I mean, one of them is this mm -hmm. demon will actually pretend mm -hmm. that they're married to, this, to the person. Yes, yes. And the spouse would yes. stand there and the demon would say, yeah. Yeah. I hate them. They're taking my spouse. Yes. I sleep with this person. They're trying to yes. infringe. And one of the uh, effects of that demon is actually a spouse loses feelings and affection for another spouse. And that is a pure sign uh, the spiritual spouse has to be cast out. Sexual spirits, they molest and torment mm -hmm. individuals. Um, if you have children, please silence this for the next few minutes. Mm -hmm. um, these incubus and succubus, they do cause orgasms. They cause wet dreams. Person wakes up emotionally drained. It is like a spiritual rape mm -hmm. and sometimes isn't physically actual rape when they wake up with scratches and bruises mm -hmm. and all of that or the spouse would body. testify yes that their wife mm -hmm. or their husband yeah is going through a sexual intercourse in the sleep and somebody has a sex with them and that yeah. usually yeah. is a demon and for those and of you who we had those uh, uh people who came for help mm -hmm. um, dream sex can be very intense and highly addictive Dream state that results in sexual orgasm is followed by guilt, condemnation, and accusation. Mm -hmm. These spirits, they delight in afflicting pain, fear, and mental anguish. Mm -hmm. Many times people who have incubus and succubus cannot get married or their marriage ends up in divorce because these demons are mm -hmm. extremely jealous. Yes, yes. They want to have that person for themselves. Only for themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Incubus and succubus, or sometimes they're called spirit spouse, they mm -hmm. come from witchcraft spells, love potions, mm -hmm. yep. and other curses of lust, sexual sin, mm -hmm. fornication, masturbation, por even pornography. They come a lot of times as generational. Sometimes they come from abuse mm -hmm. because of the perversion that was attached to the abuser. 
yes. and it gets transferred through the intercourse and sometimes they come also from soul ties. Mm -hmm. And the person who has that needs to be delivered. Um, there is a lot of times, I don't think there's a therapy that can fix it. No, they can deal with yes. the wound mm -hmm. that caused it, but yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. a it's a demon. Yeah. The demon itself it needs to be it cast has out. to be cast out. Yeah, it needs to be removed. It cannot yeah. be loved out. Yeah, you can't um, pray it out. You can't hug it out. You can't uh, counsel it out. It has to be cast out. So it's it's an unclean spirit that needs to be cast out. Mm -hmm. So, the fourth um, reason for um, spiritual battles or the fourth generational um it's not necessarily generational but this fourth spiritual problem in marriage mm -hmm. um and this is the root yes, yes. And, this and is always the root cause uh the things above that we talked about uh porn and alcohol or uh, drug abuse those are all the branches they are not the cause they are the um what's it called the effect, effects the effect of the actual root cause and the usually root cause is hidden in abuse or uh, any kind of trauma that person went through so the fourth thing yeah. is abuse and trauma and trauma. Mm -hmm. trauma is like driving with the only rear view window uh, people who mm -hmm. have trauma a lot of times they accept jesus and they take off like mm -hmm. rockets only to crash before too long yeah because they cannot escape the gravity of the trauma within. Um, there is a few ways that we respond to trauma. Yes, first one is denial. The victims are living in denial. Uh, they hurt others. It makes it makes them kind of crazy and stuff. And then a second one, minimizing. Oh, it's not that bad. Uh, it, it's fine. I can do it. And then a uh, third, third one, one. Dis uh, ra rationalizing. I'm sorry, rationalizing it. Mm -hmm. We make excuses. Uh, there is no excuse for abuse. Yeah. Okay. And That's so good. Somebody dropped yeah. it in the chat. There's no excuse for, for abuse. abuse. So um, mm -hmm. the way we deal with it is we deny. Some of us, we minimize it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we rationalize, rationalize it. it. And mm -hmm. then there's the fourth one is uh, disassociation. disassociation. And disassociation is usually when there was a heavy uh, trauma mm -hmm. as a childhood that was done or, um, yeah. And so disassociation is uh, we go somewhere else mentally. Mm -hmm. And when we uh, disassociate, we match, we watch what's happened to us from the outside. We're kind of like observing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this. It's a, it's a mental survival. Yeah, it's a, it's a response. survival response mechanism yeah, that people mm -hmm. run to. Uh, this can be a powerful mentor, mental uh, survival response. But the problem is in what we do with the memory once the trauma is over. Mm -hmm. People relieve, uh, they, they relieve the trauma again and again, mm -hmm. just like with the memory of it. Mm -hmm. And we're not therapists or counselors um, here, but we really would encourage that if you have trauma, if you have some kind of abuse, if mm -hmm. you have been abandoned, rejected, um, if you have went through a long seasons of this especially yeah. usually is in the developing stages as a child yes and as a teen mm -hmm. if you went through that that but you but honestly even uh, mm -hmm. just a second I, I i read one story trauma can come in so many different shapes and forms for example i read in a book one story where, where, where lady she was going through a surgery mm -hmm. and she was um, under anesthesia and they were operating on her and all of a sudden her anesthesia wore off and she felt everything she was mm -hmm. under a uh, muscle relaxant so she couldn't move her face mm -hmm. open her eyes say anything nothing she was just laying there and she felt everything and that was such a traumatic experience for her that she eventually she was uh, healed from uh, that um, by many years going to therapy and being proactive seeking her healing but I just want to underline the fact that many traumas can come from many different angles it's mm -hmm. not just a sexual abuse when you were a little or maybe you didn't have a sexual abuse but there was something else that happened and uh, yeah mm -hmm. I think that what are some of the practical things that people can do I think number one is please see a therapist 
-hmm. I know for many people, they just don't want to do it. But I think it's so but important. But maybe we to also need to mention, go see a Christian. Christian therapist. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, yes, of course, that's what mm -hmm. we're talking about. If you are a Christian, you, you have to see a Christian therapist. So I'm going to mention the three things not to do. Let's do it. And then we can mention things. Yeah. Number one do. is don't medicate it. Yes. And when I say medicating, I don't mean not to take medicine. I'm talking about when you medicate your pain mm -hmm. with food, sex, alcohol, and gambling. Mm -hmm. Second thing you don't want to do is motivate it by getting busy and work yourself to death. Mm -hmm. Diligence is good. Being driven sometimes mm -hmm. is actually mm -hmm. fueled by pain. Yes. And yes, God can use trauma and transform us, but some of us can let trauma actually destroy us because yes. it drives us we we get motivated more in fact a lot of us are motivated by trauma and by pain i'll prove them wrong i'll succeed it's very important mm -hmm. that it will burn you you can't live on pain for very long so medication don't medicate yourself with food sex drugs and all this stuff mm -hmm. motivated the third wrong thing to do with trauma and with pain and that is meditate on it meaning you don't want to sit and stew on it. You don't want to become a victim. You don't want it to become who you are now. So yes. what do we do? So I do want to mention not just to go into therapy and counseling first, I, because we need to go and face it. We need to face what has happened. Secondly, we need to forgive what has happened. People who caused it. And thirdly, we need to follow Jesus away from it. And fourthly, we do need to seek help. Yes, I think that all of these steps, forgiving and all of that, it, it has to be talked through with someone. Mm -hmm. Someone has to help that kind of a person to, to, to lead them through the steps of forgiveness and you know drawing closer to the Lord and all of those steps. But I think it's very, very crucial and important to seek help mm -hmm. and not to just by yourself try to think that you can you you can heal yourself mm -hmm. god created people around us who can help us and i think it's very very important to seek out help 100 percent, yeah and sometimes it could be honestly even in a small group you can talk to somebody and then yes. they could mm -hmm. uh, start helping and a lot of times the professional counselors christian bible yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, people can yeah. be very very yeah. much helpful yeah. and stuff yeah. so um, but i am always advocate for a professional help mm -hmm. especially if it's a heavier case or if it's a sexual so not, abuse. not your cousin who's 17 years no, old no no yeah. no okay <laughs> not necessarily that there has or to be Facebook some prophet, kind of a or a youtube evangelist help. yeah now, so we, we have addressed the generational curses. Mm -hmm. We have addressed also addictions and demons that are involved with that. Mm -hmm. We addressed the spirit spouse. Mm -hmm. We also have addressed right now trauma and a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. And before we address number five, which is also mm -hmm. very heavy, um, could you guys, if this is helpful for somebody, could you drop number one in the chat and then hit like to this video as well, share this. Um, and if you are on, um, Instagram. Instagram and on TikTok. We welcome you to come to YouTube mm -hmm. as well. Now, the sixth, the fifth one, spiritual warfare in marriage, spiritual problems in mm -hmm. marriage is... Soul ties. Now, mm -hmm. soul ties, what are the symptoms mm -hmm. of, of ungodly? ungodly? Okay. Now, there are godly soul ties. Yes. There's mm -hmm. nothing, but you become one with mm -hmm. the person that you're with. The Bible yeah. talks about soul ties, uh, good soul ties, and so, mm -hmm. but there are ungodly ones. What are the yes. signs of ungodly soul ties? Yes, uh, let me read that to you guys. So, the symptoms of ungodly soul ties obsessive preoccupation with another to the neglect of the things of the Lord. So if you're obsessing with a person and uh, you're neglecting your uh, like duties or your relationship with the Lord, it's a soul tie. Number two, uh, tendencies to be dominating or controlling in the relationship. Th number three, tendencies to be passive or uh, apathetic in a relationship you're easily manipulated person mm -hmm. number four inability to truly forgive from your heart okay number five another person's voice playing all over and over in your mind like a tape recorder you hear them talk talking in your mind 
then uh, inability to bring a relationship under the godly order and control of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Patterns of anger, blame, accusations in a relationship. So if you get, get always angry, you're blaming people, blaming your spouse, um, you're accusing them of, of stuff. And then uh, fear of being real with, if you cannot open up or speaking truth to another uh, individual. It, it, that's intimidation and fear of men. Mm -hmm. And the last one is psychic or occultic phenomena within a relationship. Mm -hmm. And if you can elaborate on the last one. Well, I think that a lot of times mm -hmm. what begins to happen is that soul ties are like super glue. Mm -hmm. If you have had a sexual relationship with somebody outside of marriage, consensual or forced, there is likely yes. a lingering soul tie mm -hmm. that needs to be dealt with. Otherwise, you will never be, otherwise you will be plagued with thoughts. Or emotions. Feelings mm -hmm. or even actions that are unwanted. Yes. And uh, even like against your will, mm -hmm. right? We have mm -hmm. dealt with cases where people mm -hmm. are about to get married mm -hmm. and they lose feelings. Yes. And sometimes they still have a soul tie to the previous person that they were with. Yeah. Or a person who had had an adultery. And you know, mm -hmm. it's not just about forgiveness, but it's those soul ties need to be broken um, with, with those people. And so, and so we have to be, um, that's one of the reasons why guys, we, we, we gotta not mess around with sexual immorality. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's we gotta live very, pure. It's a serious thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you gotta break those soul ties. We have a whole video about it. You can check out in the comments below. How to break soul ties. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. to break soul ties. Mm -hmm. So let's go to um, the last one. And that is number six. Mm -hmm. And, and what be, destroys marriages. Yeah, and, and that man. would be spells. Oh my gosh, this <sighs> is real 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 it's when somebody out of jealousy casts a spell on you yes. now at first it, was, it could be any uh an, any ungodly motive mm -hmm. they yeah go ahead do you think that these work for people who walk with god and who are christian if they walk with the lord if they have not committed any sin or opened the door for that spell to work i don't think the spells will work so the, the challenge we have today is this, is people don't walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. They are vulnerable. Yes. To demonic witchcraft and spells. Or they have a sin in their life that which is an open door for those spells to work. Yep. And uh, they practice voodoo dolls. Some uh, some people do voodoo dolls. Some people just literally hire pure witchcraft. Uh, pure and witchcraft. Yeah, yeah. And you guys may think that this is uh, we're far fetched. We're mm. not far fetched. This is real. Um, in our culture. This is crazy. And you know, I go to some stores because you don't go to stores. I mm -hmm. do. Not going and to many stores. times I see in the regular stores there are spell books. <laughs> I know. Such a pretty covers. Mm -hmm very purplish with flowers how to throw love spells just think about it that is insanity and people are practicing that stuff and they they actually believe in that and that's pure witchcraft and that works we live in a generation that's pagan absolutely we live in a generation that's post-christian we live in a culture today that you scroll through TikTok, and so many people are giving you uh, prophetic words which you know the psychics crystals uh burning sage consulting spirit guides and all mm -hmm. of this stuff casting spells and if you don't walk with the lord these spells will stick with you yeah, yeah. because demons do have limited power and your human power human will is not strong enough i remember a young man that came to our church and got saved prior to that he had a friend that cast a spell on him went to a, a witch doctor and here in town and they actually did a, uh, a, a voodoo doll, doll yeah. and so they start needles. poking needles into a voodoo doll and this mm -hmm. guy the very place they were poking needles this guy started to have very big problems mm -hmm. they uh, through this spell broke his business 
into zero. This guy lost everything. He was a millionaire, mm -hmm. lost everything. Mm -hmm. He was on the edge of committing suicide. Yeah. Thankfully, his girlfriend brought him to the church. He got yes. saved. Now he's serving yeah. God. Yeah. And so the Lord redeemed him. And spells, spells are real. Um, sometimes people even go to territories and they provoke demons, mm -hmm. you know, and they get spells on themselves like, oh, I don't yeah. care about witches and warlocks, you mm -hmm. know, like I, I have all the authority in Christ. Yeah, but you also don't have the authority to be arrogant and to be mm -hmm. proud. You have to walk under the yeah. covering of Jesus, under Absolutely. the authority of God. As a wife, walk under the authority of your husband. As a husband, walk under the authority of your pastor. We walk under the authority so we can walk in the authority. Amen. And that's how we stay protected and we stay within the realm of our authority. Mm -hmm. I don't go picking a fight with the principality. Why? Because yes. I don't want to come under under whatever that's going to come from that and experience needless casualties of warfare. And so spiritual world is real. Spiritual world is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, but we are very safe if we yeah. walk in simple obedience to Jesus, Absolutely. heal the sick, preach the gospel, cast out demons, mm -hmm. and curses will not stick. They will not. And uh, spells as well. They yeah. won't work. But what about... Uh, what happens to people who throw spells? I believe think? what happens to people who throw spells is this, is these spells will come back at them. Yes. I believe that the spell is like a ball you throw at the wall. Mm -hmm. Now, as a Christian, when I am un under God's protection, when I sleep at night, as I walk throughout the day, every witch that throws a spell at me out of anger, out of jealousy, I carry the protection of Jesus yes. Christ over me because Jesus says He's given me authority and nothing by any means will hurt me. Mm -hmm. And when you throw a ball into the wall, it g hits you back. Mm -hmm. When Balaam tried to curse Israel, mm -hmm. the Bible says that he couldn't do that. God mm -hmm. protected Israel. Israel wasn't even aware that yes. was happening behind the scenes. Not only yeah. that, and many times people have no idea what hit who's them, cursing them, who's cursing yeah. them and what happened, why their marriage is falling apart. You know apart. what I love about that story is that Israel wasn't holy. Excuse me, Israel wasn't perfect. Wasn't they perfect. They were complaining. Please talk about it. But I believe because of sacrifices, God protected them from the influence mm -hmm. of the spells by not letting Balaam pronounce mm -hmm. them. And so I think when we walk in the protection of Jesus, when not we walk, perfection, perfection, because we cannot be perfect. We're all but under protection. sinners, but under protection, yes. Walking in the right relationship with the church, right relationship with authority, submitted, repentant. Yes. There's a protection of God. Amen. But you know how Balaam succeeded? The Bible talks about the way of Balaam. The Bible talks Good. about the doctrine of Balaam. Because mm -hmm. when the Balaam couldn't curse them from the outside, mm -hmm. He gave Balak an idea so the that they mm -hmm. draw the curse on themselves yes. by opening themselves to idolatry and Sin. fornication. Yeah, Sin opens the door to a curse. So sometimes when the enemy sees that he cannot destroy you from the outside through yes. the curses, through the mm -hmm. spells, mm -hmm. he wants to penetrate us so that we commit sins. And mm -hmm. so, um, so yeah, I have a verse that has been such a big blessing to me concerning um, overcoming witchcraft and spells and, spells. Oh, and that's Ezekiel yes. 13 20 22 somebody drop this in the chat this this is huge this verse some of you who are going through this right now you need to remember this verse maybe if you can read this verse mm -hmm. so Ezekiel 13 20 to 22 therefore thus says the Lord God behold I am against your magic charms by which you hunt souls they're like birds I will tear them from your arms mm -hmm and let the souls go. The souls you hurt like birds, I will also tear off your veils and deliver my people out of your hand, and they shall no longer be prey in your hand. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Wow. This oh. is so encouraging mm. and so powerful. I almost feel like a God's like passion. Such a good God. God is speaking <laughs> to people that are casting spells and He said, you're hunting the souls of my people. Yes. You're after them. And God says, I'm going to tear this stuff out of your hands. Come on. And God says, I will break the veils that you cast on them. And I, I will, will deliver them. Yeah. my people mm -hmm. and they'll no longer be a prey. Come on, somebody. So, so somebody say the witchcraft is going down. Spells are being broken today Amen. because your God is on your side. He will fight for you. He will stand with you and He will deliver you from the snare 
of the fowler. He will deliver you from the trap of the enemy. And if somebody cast a spell out of jealousy, if somebody cast a spell because they wanted your relationship to fall apart so you will cry, so that you will spend your time yes. in depression. Today in the name of Jesus Christ, we just come against that spell Amen. in your life. We agree with you right now. Yes. We break that in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus. We come against generational curses that you've been fighting against. Lord, free them. Free them in Jesus' name. Free them from the curses of divorce. Deliverance from the curses Amen. of the lo loneliness and rejection. Yes. The, the curses that keep driving away happiness in marriage in Jesus' mighty name. We come against every demonic spirit of addiction, every demonic Jesus spirit of name. right now of pornography addiction, drug addiction and alcohol. Be free in Jesus' mighty yes. name. Be broken right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every chain of addiction, we break its grip over your life right now in Jesus mighty name. Come on stretch your hands toward the screen. Yes. Distance is not a barrier for God. God is the same yesterday, today and forever. He wants to deliver you right now. He wants to set you free right now. Be delivered in Jesus name. In if Jesus you're battling name. with the drug addiction, be delivered right now in Jesus name. In Jesus if you're battling with the porn addiction, be delivered in Jesus mighty name. Holy Ghost fire in Jesus, in mighty, Jesus name. mighty name. Be free in Jesus mighty name. We disconnect every demonic soul tie that the enemy has connected you to, your old past lovers and Jesus. people that have maybe have caused you harm through that. In Jesus' name, be free right now. Lord, I speak your healing to come to people that are experiencing and are going through trauma. Bring your healing in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Lord, for breaking every single spell, breaking those spells in Jesus' name. Now, I want us to agree together for deliverance from spirit spouse. Yes. If you have a demonic attack in your sleep of incubus and succubus right now, I want you to drop number one in the chat. We're going to pray specifically for your deliverance right mm -hmm. now. And I want Lana to begin and then I'm going to continue. Yes. I believe some of you will cuff, th cuff things up right now. Mm -hmm. Some yes. of you will yell, it out, yell those uh, demons out. That demon has to go right now. Amen. I want to stand in agreement that you will be delivered right now in the name of Jesus. Look at how many people are believing yes. for deliverance yes. from on. spirit spouse. We're believers begin to you. pray right now. Believers begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Yes. We are going to come against that in Jesus' name. Come on. Yes, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Right now I take authority and I rebuke every spirit spouse that is tormenting people. In Jesus' name, I command you to loose your grip from them. Come out of their lives in Jesus' name. I forbid you to touch those people in their dreams in Jesus' name. I cover them with the blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Spirit. Every spirit spouse that is tormenting, I command you to loose them in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name, out of their bodies in Jesus' name. I forbid you in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive your freedom in Jesus' mighty name. Every incubus and succubus, you have to go right now. In the mighty yes. name of Jesus Christ, I stand against you and your plan. No weapon formed against that believer, that woman yes. of God, and that man of God will prosper. So in the name of Jesus Christ, you unclean, foul spirit, come up and out right now. Come up and out out through their breath. Don't hurt them. Just leave them right now. In Jesus mighty name, those sex dreams, those demonic torments in the night, those unclean spirits that are stealing your affection for your spouse, yes. go right now in the name go of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Name. Go right now in Jesus name. Leave right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Holy Ghost fire on your kingdom. You spirit spouse, Holy Ghost fire on your kingdom. You are illegal, you are a trespasser and right now you gotta go in Jesus mighty name. You gotta go in the name of Jesus Christ. Be free in Jesus name. Yes. In Jesus name. Just take a deep breath and breathe it out right now. Breathe it out right now. Be delivered in Jesus mighty name. Be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. Be delivered in Jesus name. And if you feel like, if you feel like something just like, almost like got stuck in here, just honestly, just force burp. That's it. Out in Jesus name. Be free in Jesus mighty name. Thank you Lord. Be delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody drop that in the chat. I receive. Drop yes. that in the chat. I receive right now. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I and want us to actually pray right now about um, healing for people who went through abuse and trauma. 
okay. the Holy Spirit will minister to them. Yes, it's good to seek professional help, but our healer, number one, is the Holy Spirit who searches the hearts and who can mend, bind, and heal hearts together. And right now, I just want us to pray for those people. If you've experienced sexual or physical or any kind of abuse or trauma in your life, mm. agree with us today, for we're going to agree with you for your healing in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, we come to you right now. Yes, Lord. And we know that you are a loving Father, and we thank you that you love us. We thank you that you send us the Holy Spirit, who is our comforter, who is our healer. And that we ask you right now for every single person who has gone through abuse or trauma, that you will heal their hearts, Lord. You will touch their hearts by your presence, that you will begin to untie them, Lord, that you will begin to bind the heart together that was shattered maybe and broken to many pieces, Lord. I pray that you will bring yes, healing, precious Holy Spirit, that you will bring your healing right now, precious Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray, Lord. I feel Amen. that somebody who's watching and they have a soul tie to a person and it's their ex who cursed them and who said you'll never, ever get married again and you'll never find somebody. If you're not going to be with me, you can't be with anybody else. And what holds you back to that person is you actually have gifts from that person in your possession and you need to throw them away. Yes. You need to get rid of huge. that stuff. Yeah. And then those words, you already broke the words, but that connection will be broken. Just if you have those gifts or you have those things, just, just, just get rid of them. And Lord, I pray right now that the words that your ex has said that you will never get married, you'll never find happiness, if you're not with them, you cannot be with anybody else. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I break those words right now. Be free in Jesus' name. Yes. Be delivered, be unchained right now in Jesus' name. Yes. And I see people saying that I'm throwing up right now. I feel nauseous. The Lord right now is setting you free. Receive your deliverance in Jesus' name. Receive your complete deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. If you have crystals in your possession, if you have demonic objects in your possessions, get rid of that stuff right now. If you're watching us and you're addicted to alcohol, take that alcohol right now, go to the toilet and flash it down the toilet. Yes. That stuff is not your portion. God doesn't want you to be intoxicated. He yes. wants you to be delivered Amen. and be free. And right now that you received the prayer of freedom for alcohol, you have to do a practical step. Flash it down the toilet in Jesus' name. If you're watching us and you are in a homosexual marriage, you need to get divorced. Listen to me. God doesn't, God does not bless that kind of marriage. We had a testimony, I posted it, mm -hmm. where a person watched the video yeah. and the next day got yeah. divorced. And now he's committing his life yeah. to Jesus yeah. Christ. You know, God blesses heterosexual marriage. Mm -hmm. He does not bless a homosexual marriage. I don't care that both of you love each other. It's love is love. Love is not love. God love is not God. Yeah. Love is not God. God decides that. And so if you're in that relationship or maybe you're in marriage and you brought home you brought pornography to a marriage bed where your spouse made you watch pornography mm -hmm. to spice up your yes. sex life. That needs to stop tonight. You need to repent of that because you brought a demon into your marriage. Yes. You do not need pornography to spice up your marriage. Okay? And if your spouse forces pornography, Okay, let him rent a room in a hotel. He does not need to be yes. with you then. I'm not saying you need to divorce him, but you might need to distance him and distance. say, listen, we're not bringing porn into the, this is two of us, not three of us yes. that's going to be married. God doesn't bless this marriage where there's like seven of you Come over on, there. Yeah. Okay, so, and next week we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about some of the stuff that a lot of Christians need to, need to know about physical intimacy in marriage. And so um, any other things that you feel in your heart to, to release into people that are, we are praying for right now? or any um, prayers. Yes, I actually want to come back to the cursed wo words. I feel like there are so many people that were cursed by people who um, loved them, but they, you know, didn't love them back or something. Mm. I just have this thing. If somebody told you that they will never love you the way I love you, you know, that is a way of manipulation. If a person loves you, they will never say those words. Mm -hmm. You you just or you will never be 
loved you will you will never succeed you will never be happy and nobody can love you like i love you that is pure demonic and i break those words in the mighty name of jesus i oh, break jesus, them off God. of you off of your mind in the mighty name of jesus off of your soul in jesus mighty name let Holy Spirit, let your fire break those words in Jesus, affect yes, of those yes, words Lord. in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. In, in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Guys, I do have a link right now that says testimony. If you are experiencing deliverance, if you are experiencing freedom right now, let us know. If something is happening to you, for those of you on TikTok and on Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, would love to see you on YouTube right now, but you're welcome there as well. Um, uh, let me know what's happening to you, uh, what God is doing right now. If you're experiencing um, deliverance, uh, we would love to um, hear about it. And then um, one more thing, we will be answering some questions in just a moment, but I do want to ask you about um, if the Lord puts on your heart I want to invite you to partner with our ministry. Um, we provide courses for people. We provide videos like these, as well as we do this full time now. And we provide written uh, material. We translate our content into Spanish, into Russian for YouTube. Also, we release books, Romanian language, uh, Farsi, uh, Urdu, um, Armenian, Russian we're translating right now into French into German yeah. and so all of that takes resources and we're doing that because of you guys okay. so your partnership is going to make such a big difference I know a lot of you who maybe feel led to sacrifice as well to give your best gift you can do that today and then on all the platforms we are I'm going to pin the comment right now Graceland's comment um, in here um, on all the uh, platforms we are dropping links right now so you can do that and it will be very much appreciated um, mm -hmm. Priscilla is asking are we doing it in Korean actually Hannah is helping us mm -hmm. to find um, mm -hmm. Korean language as well so yeah we are really looking we want to translate it into hundred different languages and so um, guys thank you so much for doing that and yeah. it's content that people don't talk about like deliverance yeah. like fasting yeah. Um, and then I have two more books that are coming out, one this year and one next year, one on Holy Spirit relationship, then one on uh, dealing with suffering. And so it's, it's just gonna be a lot of really good stuff. And then we have a new marriage course that's actually coming out here any moment from now, any day. And so and we have like eight more courses that are in the pipeline. And so we're bringing people into our team to help us with them. So just very much appreciated. Um, Brother Hugh is going to be with us actually at Hungry Come Gen on, very soon. Yes. I'm not going to uh, let you know that until <laughs> a little bit later. So, uh, but yeah, my, my friend Brother Hugh is going to be uh, with us. So uh, guys, really appreciate that. Um, so if you want to give, there's a link, mm -hmm. Cash App Venmo and all of that, it will be much appreciated. Um, we want to take a moment and answer some preguntas. <laughs> so um, if you have this. a question, um, me and my wife are going to mm -hmm. attempt to answer some. So um, okay, if you guys have a question, go ahead and um, drop that into a chat, start a Q&A, ask us um, and then we are going to um, drop this mm -hmm. into the um, uh, comment as well. So we're going to get those on YouTube. And um, do you guys pray together? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, yes and no, actually, right? We, uh, we don't really pray together unless uh, we have our separate prayer lives. Okay, they are different, they look different, they have different timings, but sometimes we do pray together. Sometimes if we're going through something, I will come and ask him, could you pray for me? And mm -hmm. we will pray together. Or uh, he will ask me, could you pray for me? I'll pray for him, we'll pray together. Or if he sees I'm down or something, he feels like he needs to pray for me, he will come up, we'll pray together, pray for me. Mm -hmm. This is how it looks like with us. Mm -hmm. Um, how to work forgiveness after adultery? That's a very good question. I think forgiveness is never easy. Forgiveness is released 
and um, the feelings will you know catch up ask the Holy Spirit to help you to get recovered from it you know you release your forgiveness and the Holy Spirit is going to work with healing your heart and obviously trust is restored with time not right away mm -hmm. and yeah what do you think I think so too I think that um, forgiveness just like every forgiveness yeah. um, this requires time forgiveness is quick the restoration yeah. is hard if yeah, the other yeah, person yeah. is truly repentant yeah. you need to forgive but um, e even after you forgave sometimes those bitter feelings they come back and that's normal that's okay you just keep releasing them back mm -hmm. releasing them coming back to the point okay I forgave Lord healed my heart mm -hmm. you know um, we have a lot more questions that are coming up in here. Thank yeah, you, everybody, that's that. making the donations. We really much appreciate it. Um, how to set boundaries in marriage? Mm, that's a very broad question. I mean, question boundaries in marriage, mm -hmm. like. I think what when when we boundaries? set boundaries in marriage, we do have what are we, talking we about do here? have boundaries that we protect our marriage. Yes. Um, we try to protect our marriage from outside. So mm -hmm. we usually we, we are one of our boundaries is that we don't have um, I don't meet one on one with the person. My wife uh, doesn't meet one on one with the person. Uh, the other of opposite sex of opposite of sex. sex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We also one of our boundaries. Most of our boundaries isn't just about protecting our marriage. It's preventing. Preventing, so we prioritize our date nights. We prioritize um, that we have intimacy in a marriage. We prioritize that we are kind toward each other. And so, when you feed that relationship, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then it's easier not to be. It's kind of like this, you know. When you are fed, you're not going to be super tempted with um, other things that the world offers. But honestly, those boundaries. I mean, there are uh, main boundaries of marriage, obviously, that we protect. But each person has their own trigger points. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to work and learn obviously your spouse and protect them and yeah mm -hmm. how do you get rid of demonic items do you burn them yes it best is to burn them sometimes yeah, yeah. you can't burn them you just throw them away and but dispose burn them. of them somehow yeah. mm -hmm. and dispose them but please don't give it to goodwill or don't uh give it to someone <laughs> <laughs> or, <you laughs> don't know. gift it to someone <laughs> uh -huh. yeah what about intercessory prayer i mean uh i'm assuming praying for your husband or something like that yeah we strongly believe in that you need to do that yes absolutely uh, what to do when your husband holds out on sex and intimacy um, well we're gonna talk about that next week and stuff so if your husband holds out yeah make sure that he tunes in next week <laughs> yeah That's a big question. Um, do you think it's wrong to write all your prayers in a journal instead of praying them for individually um, no I don't think it's wrong it's just the way you do it it's fine if you're writing it out it's but i do think the bible tells us to pray our prayers it, jesus it, says yeah, yeah. when you pray say this true true yeah so there's nothing wrong with with writing them but as the long Lord as you're actually praying it as well yeah Let's yeah just mm -hmm. go that. yeah say that um mm -hmm. what else is there what guidance will you offer to a single mom who has repented but have not dated since child's birth, eight years, and have renewed desire for marriage. And never, and have never been married, I'm or I'm uh, or I'm is I'm not assuming, married. I'm assuming a single mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think. I think you have a. Um, it's a more complex situation, because the person that you are looking for, they're not just the one who <laughs> should accept you. Mm -hmm. They also have to accept um, your child your as child. their own. So you're not just looking for somebody yeah, who fits yeah. you. You're, you're looking for somebody who, who can fits be. fits you too. Yeah, who yeah. pretty much mm -hmm. fits both. And so you That's have to good, be okay yeah. if some people are not okay with that. Yeah. But um, so you just have to be conscious yeah. of that and you have to be protective a little bit of that. Yeah, your you, priority at this moment is obviously your child. Mm -hmm. Not just not just uh, uh, you. you getting married. And stuff, so yeah. Can you do self-deliverance before you seek deliverance? I believe so. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did my self-deliverance so many times, praying prayers and coming against and rebuking. And I still do that, actually. Mm -hmm. It's many times 
throughout the whole, throughout your life you will still need to do and practice mm-hmm. standing in faith and coming against in your own life you know practicing self-deliverance mm-hmm. totally good now some people say that um, can people be delivered if they refuse to admit sins uh, that is very um, they can but most likely will not this is what I can well, they say. will not uh, because stay free the, because yes, those demons yeah, could come yeah, back if those yeah. sins were now open, it can sins. happen that God just by his sovereignty zaps them with the power and delivers them you know very rarely probably will not happen but it can happen and after that it will lead them towards repentance mm-hmm. you know but most likely it happens you know when a person they have to repent first and then receive deliverance to to for deliverance to be sustained mm-hmm. Adam West is asking, we don't have a home church yet, can't find a good one here in Texas. Is it okay to tie it to your ministry? Uh, Absolutely. It, I'm sure it's okay, <laughs> yeah, but it would be good to find a local church as well. Yeah. Um, uh, how do you know if you have demonic items? So it's usually uh, de- uh, items that have to do with witchcraft. It's items that are devoted to demons. Uh, charms, mm-hmm. anything that means Horoscopes. something. Uh, the eye, jewelry, women like to wear that. And yeah, then, jewelry that has to do with the yeah, occultic meaning, right? Occultic meaning or bring luck or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I have a whole video about that yes. and mm-hmm. stuff, so um, so you, you can check it out. Uh, Daniel Adams is saying, good uh, ground to tithe to. Uh, <laughs> Daniel, thank you. Uh, love you, man of God. Uh, you guys, uh, shout out to uh, Daniel right here is Mm -hmm. in the chat on YouTube. So for those of you who are Mm -hmm. not on YouTube, you're missing out right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Cursed photos. I have pictures of being pregnant with abusive ex-husband keeping for kids. Can those hold curses? No, I don't think so. so. Uh, No, I don't think those can hold. He's still the father of children. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it brings you pain, put it away or even destroy it for goodness sake. But it's they cannot hold curses. How do you handle spiritual warfare in an engagement? Fiance deals with the spirit of fear, nightmares, and anxiety and makes it difficult to move forward. Um, I would probably not rush with marriage until mm-hmm. um, this issue is resolved. Yes. Another thing is that if a, if a fiance does not believe in deliverance and they got demons, um, that could be a red flag. Mm-hmm. Because it could potentially destroy the relationship. A hundred percent. And actually, it, it's not going to be the demons that will mm-hmm. destroy it mm-hmm. as much as it's going to be the, the disagreement mm-hmm. too. Because you're all going to be fighting against each other instead of the spirit, spiritual problems. Mm-hmm. And so I always tell people, be careful when you marry people with whom you disagree on theological issues. Like the main ones. Especially. Yes. Like if you're uh, mm-hmm. hanging out with a person who, you know, watches... Uh, movies that constantly diss on supernatural, and and there you are, you know, wanting to go watch, you know, they shall ex- and, um, come out in Jesus' name, the the movie, you know, about deliverance, and all they want to watch mm-hmm. is uh, you know um, American Gospel or go- whatever that the the Calvinistic cessationist movie um, that you know, and th- that's mm-hmm. all they talk about that. So like, of course you're gonna have issues, and then mm-hmm. you know, they, and on the top of that, if one of you has spiritual problems, then your solution to those problems are gonna be yeah. so different. So it's just very important to to really um, talk about it. Maybe give them um, they shall expel uh, demons book mm-hmm. or yeah, break, break free, free book. book. Uh, just honestly, but but talk about it. Don't rush. Yeah, be yeah, very yeah. careful about um, going into marriage with somebody that uh, believes in not that kind of stuff. About the movies. Um, you guys should all watch last episode of Chosen. Oh my gosh, Jesus walking on water. <laughs> but isn't Remember? Chosen like demonic and stuff? Chosen is like Mormon, no? Like people saying that Chosen is really bad. I mean, you watch Chosen. Yeah, I watched. No, 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 it's a Christian. <laughs> it's a Christian. <laughs> I love Chosen, by the way. We love and Chosen. Stuff. So I know that this is going to get me uh, a lot of uh, hate right now. Why? So, so haters, uh, it's so beautiful. come on, get ready to comment. <laughs> Help us with the algorithm. I love and, uh, it. Yeah, I think that. Chosen is not the Bible. You have to read the Bible, okay? So for it's those a, of you, it, it's, it's a movie. does not replace the <laughs> yes. Bible, okay? So it's there's a, a lot TV of creativity show. that's involved into it. But, you know, my wife did not let me. I wanted to do a reaction like Isaiah. My wife says, do not do a reaction to Chosen. 
So, and, uh, <laughs> I mean, so, yeah. one person is enough, Isaiah. <laughs> Isaiah. And I actually watched his reactions a lot, so it's good. Yeah, and I don't have good screen, uh, green screen, so where I can hide myself <laughs> and stuff. So, um, yeah, yeah, but I watched it, cried about it, and uh, cried almost almost every episode. Like yes, the first so episode powerful, about man. deliverance. <gasps> yeah. Oh man! Like and the last one where Jesus walked on mm -hmm. water, it got me almost. The first like, thing I I so went good. like, I like yeah. like when Jesus comes, you know, this poor poor Mary Magd yeah, Magdalene, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he just like mm -hmm. he just commands that demon. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh. <laughs> or when the disciples went out to heal the sick and cast out uh -huh. demons. So That's incredible. So incredible. Yeah, so incredible. Yeah, I just I just love the emphasis on the supernatural, which yes, I think yes. uh, almost like. Like, I almost felt like, like never the, before. Yeah, the movies. rest of the Jesus movies, yeah. they didn't, I don't know, they didn't connect with that. Mm -hmm. With I, I know that they really trying to portray the humanity of Jesus here and about the lives of his disciples, but I really love the mm -hmm. the emphasis on the miracles. And like yeah. the one about the, the guy that's been coming to Jesus' ministry, you know, the lame guy uh, with a cripple, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and that. he was bringing a, a, a lady that was blind. Yes. And I was so glad he, they healed him. Yes. Because... You know, I knew that Jesus didn't just let people who yeah. ask for healing, you know, he didn't just give them this little encouragement. Hey, it's for betterment. You know, God go, wants to use it for his glory. Lesson, yeah. You know, God is mm -hmm. giving you this sickness for your glory. You know, like I, I really don't like that kind of view. First of all, it's not scriptural, but people have really spun that to mm -hmm. justify lack of miracles happening. And I love the fact that Jesus healed a man. It's just yeah, like, it's uh, great. Cry. Anyway, that's, that's enough for today uh, when it comes to uh, Chosen. So we are heading over to... Um, New York tomorrow we're gonna be with Pastor Mike um, and with V1 and uh, we'll be back on Sunday for Hungry Gen service super stoked for Hungry Gen uh, the Lord has given me a word this Sunday um, that we're gonna I'm gonna be preaching and we have a huge announcement that we're so excited to announce it and that that's gonna happen this Sunday at Hungry Gen so don't miss Hungry Gen uh, this Sunday at 8 o'clock, at 10 o'clock, and at 12 o'clock. And then next week I'm going to be in San Antonio. Um, and then the week after that in North Carolina with Jeremiah Johnson. And um, and then we have our pastor's conference coming up. And so really excited for that as well. And we have the fast coming up very soon in three weeks. You're thrilled about that. <laughs> no, I'm not thrilled. I'm going to be honest, guys. I am not thrilled about thrilled. the fast. And so, um, Come on, it's yeah. your favorite thing yeah. to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see somebody is asking uh, about our children, guys. I uh, so many of you are guys, excited. They're coming. We guys, promise guys, you. <laughs> I see. I feel like everybody is more excited about us having children than us about us having children. Okay, oh, yes. so this is what I'm gonna do. Very soon, I'm gonna open a fund <laughs> for our child. For, our for those of you who've been praying for it, prophesying about it and been asking oh. us, I'm going to let you sow into that. <laughs> and secondly, I'm going to have you sign up for being a uh, babysitters. We're going to scan you first, you know, like do your background check. And then because uh, I see a lot of you have been asking about this. OK, so we're going to have a special uh, <laughs> thing. But guys, keep in prayer. We will have an announcement, but not anytime soon. Um, so, um, yeah, maybe it's a sign that you should have a child. Um, yeah, children are expensive, but the Lord, the Lord's timing, the Lord's timing and stuff. So, yeah, we will. Anyway, I can't say anything right now. Okay, so I can't say anything right now. But Sunday saying, I'm coming this Sunday. Uh, I'm, I am a wonderful gra uh, Grammy. Come on, somebody. All right. You know, I already have a, a grandma. It's my mom. But we and are. my mom. But we are opening. We're, we can open more slots for more grandmas. <laughs> for <right>? more grandmas. <laughs> yeah, for now, we only have a dog. So that. Yeah, yeah. But very soon. He has guys. a lot of babysitters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we are open. Uh, yeah, so be moving to Tri-Cities and then you can uh, help us out uh, with that as well. But we would love to, uh, guys, keep us in prayer. Now, put the next video, uh, Breaking Soul Ties. Breaking Soul Ties? Breaking Soul Ties. Um, so can you put that up after, after we're done? Uh, yeah, yeah. So what I want to do right now is, um, guys, I have shared this before, I think last week. I want to help my uh, my best friend, mm -hmm. um, and then his wife is streaming right now mm -hmm. together on marriage. They're gonna also be dealing. They're praying for this as well. They have a powerful testimony. So I'm gonna airdrop. I'm gonna drop this in the chat. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, uh, jump jump on Pastor Ilya's um, live stream, and then tell him that you're coming from Pastor Vlad's and Lana's. And so, um, yeah. 
and then um, we're gonna say bye to you guys we'll see you next week yes guys thank you so much for tuning in see you next week we will see you yep. next week god bless you guys